in 1982, 35 years ago, long before there were cell phones or PCs, we experimented with UHF onboard transmitting cameras. I was working at Lark Engineering at the time and we made RF filters for the space shuttle, so I learned a lot about toroids and RF. Today this is called FPV. It uses 2.4 GHz and 5.8 GHz frequencies. Here are some pictures of our first successful test. I'll read the caption in this newsletter article. On February 28th, we flew the small video camera on my Hilo and taped the flight on a VCR with downloading built by Mike. This is exciting and getting better all the time in our quest for an affordable, small-scale video surveillance system. Mike is making progress and has an article being published in the full-scale magazine Kit Aircraft featuring his invention. I flew it while looking at a black and white TV monitor on the tailgate in the back of his truck while everybody held uh, cloth over top of us to block out the light. It was quite exciting and we wound up uh, inspecting the top of telephone poles. <laughs> Hello folks, Dave Herbert here, Night Flyer. You know, I wasn't planning on making a, a video because I have a couple already on the storyboard. Um, Donovan's and also the very first night flying helicopter, those are coming up. But yesterday at Donovan's Indoor Flying, I got into an argument with one of the fellows there about RF and uh, the antenna for diversity antennas. So what I wanted to talk about today was I wanted to spell a couple of things and show you some things. Now you know last summer before everything that I owned burned down I was having trouble with one of my spectrum receivers when it got near the ground. Well we were talking about FPV and it turns out that the problems I was having was because I was using a receiver that only had one antenna rather than two and also that the transmitter, the antenna on the transmitter you know, in the old days, we used to fly our transmitters with the antennas pointing straight out. And many of you know, I work for Craft Systems. I built this transmitter, which built it all by myself. It's got my name on it here. This is the Craft Signature Series. It's on 53 200 megahertz because I have a ham license and was able to do that. But most of these radios that uh, everybody was familiar with at the time had only seven frequencies and these we invented was the plug-in module so you could plug in your frequency module like this okay and the receivers had antennas on them like this okay which usually got in the way of everything but that was determined because it was on 72 megahertz that length is determined by the wavelength. One of the known things about the telescoping antennas like this was when, when you were flying most people did not have a problem with it but there's a cone of silence here. If you're pointing right at the airplane it was always told to fly it this way or this way never point your antenna at the airplane because there's a cone of silence a dead zone here. Okay on the top because these radiate out like this okay well the new transmitters actually do the same thing they ro rotate out and I'm going to show you what's inside this antenna so you can see exactly how that works the same thing today if you have this antenna pointing straight at your airplane your signal is weaker than if it is pointed this way this is the recommended way of flying your airplanes or helicopters or quads with the antennas pointed out either right or left never straight up so to fix those problems for example my generation DX2 has the antenna straight up but also has an antenna built into the handle that goes this way so we got one this way we've got one this way so that's called a diversity antenna and that gives you a good signal no matter which way you're pointing so that was the way they figured that out and then for example all the the drones and quads and FPV stuff there's antennas like this these are 
gigahertz machines and for transmitting to the uh, FPV goggles. The antennas on them are actually little they're protected umbrellas but inside that umbrella is one of these. So that's what's inside there. That protects it if you hit something. Okay. And uh, this antenna is actually the receiver antenna, which is aimed straight up, so that stays up in good sight. We're going to be flying this as soon as it ever gets nice weather. In fact, some of the little cameras for FPV also, you can see it has the best ones, have these, these little antennas on there like that. Okay. So, the argument was that inside these antennas, were toroids. <laughs> I worked in the RF industry and I worked in, in uh, microwave engineering for a long time to, to making microwave filters and I know exactly what a toroid is and there are, believe me, you're going to be surprised. There's no toroids in here. I'm going to show you right now. So, hope you, this will clear up the magic of the antenna. So, let's take a look at it. Most of the newer receivers all have diversity antennas. That's two of them right here. This is a Lemon. And uh, here is an AR8010T. This is a telemetry receiver. And they also have two antennas here for diversity plus an external receiver which gets separated. This gives you the absolute best way of getting the signal into your receiver from the transmitter. The old ways, of course, were this way with the long antenna, which could be interfered by a lot of stuff on 72 megahertz. The 5.8 radios actually is a second harmonic of 2.4 gigahertz. So, let's go over here and I'm going to show you. This is the inside of a Walkera uh, 2.4 gigahertz radio. Walkera is one of the best known names in. Uh, Hong Kong and China for antennas and I'm going to show you what is inside this antenna. As you can see there's your transmitter part right here and this is a cable. It's a tiny little cable and what's in here? I'm going to show you what's in here. That's it. It's just the end of the cable. It comes up to the end and then you've got your end. That's all that's in here. I can pull this whole thing right out. I'm going to unplug this off of here, pull it out, that's your antenna. There's the clip and the antenna. Nothing magic at all. A couple of radios I had had a little tiny printed circuit board that went in here but it was just the wire was printed onto the board so there's nothing special in here. Now in the case of my Saima flying car radio, Saima is a very, here's the antenna. It's not even stuck into the antenna mount. It's just sticking up right here and it works very well. So that's all there is folks. There's no toroids, nothing special. Just a regular antenna here. They've got clips on so they just actually pull, push on. Okay, let's push this antenna back in through here. That just plugs in there. There's your antenna. Nothing magic in here, just a piece of plastic. This goes on here. And that goes on there like that. And the pin goes in there. That's all there is. Well, some radios may actually have a customized design, but the majority of the radios we use today all use this method. Well, thanks a lot for watching. Please stay tuned and subscribe for the first known night flying RC helicopter, Donovan's FPV indoor fly-in, and a big challenge video.